Hello friends, welcome to this lecture dark phase of photosynthesis. We will be discussing it in three principal pathways with C3 cycle, C4 cycle and CAM pathway. Let us start with the introduction. Green plants capture solar energy and convert it into chemical bond energy stored in organic compounds by the process of photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water are transformed into simple carbohydrates and oxygen gas is liberated as a byproduct. The term photosynthesis literally means synthesis using light. In photosynthesis, the plant uses solar energy to oxidize water, thereby releasing oxygen and to reduce carbon dioxide into organic compounds, primarily sugars. In other words, photosynthesis is a complex process by which energy from the sun is trapped by chlorophyll and used in a complex array of chemical reactions for the manufacture of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide and water. The complex series of reactions that culminate in the reduction of carbon dioxide include the thylakoid reactions and the re carbon fixation reactions. The thylakoid reactions or light dependent phase of photosynthesis takes place in the specialized internal membranes of the chloroplasts called grana and constitute light reaction while the carbon fixation reactions or light independent phase takes place in stroma of chloroplast and constitute the dark reaction. In other words, we can say that the process of photosynthesis occurs in two stages with the light dependent stage also called a light reaction or hill reaction and the light independent stage called as dark reaction. During the light reaction, plants capture the energy of light and use it to make the energy storage molecule ATP and NADPH which is the assimilatory power. In the light independent, that's the dark reaction, the assimilatory power, that's ATP and NADPH produced in the light reaction is used to convert carbon dioxide into sugars that can be used by the organisms and other animals that feed on them. The dark phase of photosynthesis or dark reaction, which is also called as biosynthetic phase, includes the reactions catalyzing the reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates coupled to the consumption of ATP and NADPH by enzymes found in the stroma. These reactions were earlier thought to be light independent and as a consequence were referred to as the dark reaction. However, it has been demonstrated that these reactions require light to activate many enzymes involved in carbon dioxide fixation. Thus, the name dark reaction is misleading and these reactions are more suitably referred to as the carbon reactions of photosynthesis. The assimilation and reduction of carbon dioxide in angiosperms takes place through three pathways with Calvin cycle or C3 cycle, Hatch and Slack cycle also called as C4 cycle and the third one is the Crassulation acid metabolism also called as CAM pathway. All photosynthetic eukaryotes from primitive algae to most advanced angiosperm reduce carbon dioxide to carbohydrates via the same basic mechanism that is C3 cycle or Calvin cycle. Other metabolic pathways associated with the photosynthetic fixation of carbon dioxide such as the C4 cycle and the CAM pathways and the photorespiratory carbon oxidation cycle are either auxiliary to or dependent on the basic Calvin cycle. Dear friends, let's first discuss the Calvin cycle which is also called as C3 cycle. The Calvin cycle is also known as Calvin Benson Basham cycle or reductive pentose phosphate cycle or C3 cycle. The cycle was discovered by Melvin Calvin, James Basham, and Andrew Benson. It involves a series of biochemical redox reactions that take place in the stroma of chloroplasts in photosynthetic organisms. 
in the Kelvin cycle, carbon dioxide and water from the environment are enzymatically combined with a 5 carbon acceptor molecule that's rubellose 1,5-bisphosphate also called as RUBP to generate two molecules of 3 carbon intermediate. This intermediate that's 3 phosphoglycerate it's also called as 3-PGA is reduced to carbohydrate by use of ATP and NADPH generated photochemically in the light reaction. The cycle is completed by regeneration of the 5-carbon acceptor that's rubellose 1,5-bisphosphate. Since the input of carbon dioxide is continuous, the synthesis of carbohydrates like starch or sucrose provides the output for maintaining an adequate flow of carbon atoms in the cycle. The Kelvin cycle proceeds in three stages. Number one is the carboxylation of the carbon dioxide acceptor RUBP forming two molecules of 3PGA, the first stable intermediate of the Kelvin cycle. Number second is the reduction of 3PGA to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, a carbohydrate. And number third is the regeneration of the carbon dioxide acceptor RUBV from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. A schematic representation of the C3 cycle is as in the carboxylation phase, carbon dioxide reacts with RUBP, that's ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate, to yield two molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate. The reaction is catalyzed by the chloroplast enzyme ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase or oxygenase, referred to by the acronym RUBISCO, through a two step reaction. The product of the first step is an enzyme complex that can capture carbon dioxide or oxygen. Thus, the NADL complex is the real carboxylase or oxygenase. The carbon dioxide that is captured by the NADL in second step initially produces a 6 carbon complex which is an unstable intermediate that is 2 carboxyl 3 keto arabinoetol 1,5 bisphosphate that immediately splits into two molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate that is 3 PGA, a 3 carbon compound. Here it is to be noted that the enzyme or BISCO has both carboxylase and oxygenase activity and is very abundant protein representing 40% of the total soluble protein of leaves. In the reduction phase of C3 cycle, the 3 phosphoglycerate formed as a result of the carboxylation of RUBV is phosphorylated to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, that's 1,3-BPGA. The enzyme 3-phosphoglycerate kinase catalyzes the phosphorylation of 3-PGA by ATP produced during the light reaction. Here, it is to be noted that two molecules of 3 PGA are produced for every carbon dioxide that enters the cycle. So this step utilizes two ATP molecules per molecule of carbon dioxide fixed. Then another enzyme that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase catalyzes the reduction of 1,3-BPGA by NADPH which is another product of light reaction to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde and the NADPH is oxidized to NADP positive. Here again two molecules of NADPH are utilized per molecule of carbon dioxide fixed. The next stage in the Kelvin cycle is the regeneration of RUBV 5,3-PGAL molecules produce three RUBV molecules utilizing three molecules of ATP. The regeneration stage can be broken down into steps as isomerization of 3-PGAL into dihydroxyacetone 3-phosphate that's DHAP by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase also a 
carbon molecule. Second, one molecule of dihydroxystone 3 phosphate that is DHAP undergoes aldol condensation with a second molecule of 3 PGAL using aldolase to give fructose 16 bisphosphate that is also called as F16 BP, which is hydrolyzed to fructose 6 phosphate that is F6P by the enzyme fructose 16 bisphosphatase, which is a 6 carbon sugar. Then F6P, that's fructose 6-phosphate, has two carbons removed by transketolase, producing erythrose 4-phosphate, that's E4P. The two carbons on transketolase are added to a G3P to produce xylulose 5-phosphate, that's XU5P. Erythrose 4-phosphate and a DHAP are converted into Cedoheptolose 17-bisphosphate, that is a 7-carbon sugar by the enzyme aldolase. Cedoheptolose 17-bisphosphatase, it is the one of the only three enzymes of the Kelvin cycle that are unique to plants, cleaves Cedoheptolose 17-bisphosphate into Cedoheptolose 7-phosphate, releasing an organic phosphate into the solution. The enzyme transketolase removes two carbon units from cedoheptolose 7-phosphate to produce ribose 5-phosphate, that's R5P, and the two carbons remaining on transketolase are transferred to one of the G3P to produce xylulose 5-phosphate, that's XU5P. Ribose 5-phosphate, that's R5P, is converted into ribulose 5-phosphate, that's RU5P, by phosphopentose isomerase. Xylulose 5-phosphate, that's XU5P, is also converted into RU5P by phosphopentose epimerase. And finally, the phospho Ribulokinase, that is another plant unique enzyme of the pathway, phosphorylates RU5P into ribulose 15 bisphosphate, that's RUBP, completing the Kelvin cycle. This requires the input of 1 ATP molecule. Thus, of 6 glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecules produced, 5 are used to make 3 RUBP, that is a 5 carbon molecule, totaling 15 carbons with only one G3P available for subsequent conversion to hexose. This requires 9 ATP molecules and 6 NADPH molecules per 3 carbon dioxide molecules. Rubulose 1,5-bisphosphate carboxylase, also called as oxygenase, that's Rubisco, it is the main enzyme of Kelvin cycle, has the tendency to act as both carboxylase and oxygenase. Under low atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide that is below 1% and high concentration of oxygen, Rubisco fixes atmospheric oxygen instead of carbon dioxide and the process is known as photorespiration. It was Decker and Teo in 1959 who reported that light induces oxidation of photosynthetic intermediates with the help of oxygen in tobacco. The extra input of oxygen and extra release of carbon dioxide by green plants was defined as photorespiration by Krotko in 1963. Photorespiration is the uptake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide in light and results in the biosynthesis of glycolate in chloroplast and the subsequent metabolism of glycolytic acid in the same leaf cell. Biochemical mechanism for photorespiration is also called glycolate metabolism or C2 cycle. The process of photorespiration involves the involvement of chloroplasts, peroxisomes and mitochondria. The process of photorespiration can be broken down into steps as ribulose 15 bisphosphate that is RUBP is oxidized by RUBP oxygenase to one molecule of 
थ्री फॉस्फो गिलसरिक एसिड एंड अनदर मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ टू फॉस्फो ग्लाइकोलिक एसिड द टू फॉस्फो ग्लाइकोलिक एसिड इज डी फॉस्फोराइलेटेड टू ग्लाइकोलिक एसिड बाय द एंजाइम फॉस्फेटेज द ग्लाइकोलिक एसिड इज देन ट्रांसपोर्टेड टू द प्रोक्सीसोम्स वायर इट रिएक्ट्स विद ऑक्सीजन टू फॉर्म ग्लाइक्सलिक एसिड एंड हाइड्रोजन प्रोक्साइड विद हेल्प ऑफ द एंजाइम ग्लाइकोलिक ऑक्सीडेज हाइड्रोजन प्रोक्साइड दैट्स एच टू ओ टू इज फॉर्मड एंड देन डेस्ट्रॉयड बाई द एंजाइम कैटेलाइज द ग्लाइक्सलिक एसिड इज देन कन्वर्टेड इन टू एन एमाइनो एसिड ग्लाइसिन बाई ट्रांस एमाइनेशन रिएक्शन कैटेलाइज बाई द एंजाइम गुलटामेट ग्लाइक्सलेट ट्रांस एमाइनेज द ग्लाइसिन इज ट्रांसपोर्टेड आउट ऑफ द प्रोक्सीसोम्स इन टू माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया वायर टू मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ ग्लाइसिन इंट्रैक्ट टू फॉर्म वन मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ सीरीन विद कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड ओमोनिया एज बाई प्रोडक्ट The amino acid serine returns to peroxisome where it is deaminated and reduced to hydroxypyruvic acid and finally to glyceric acid. The glyceric acid finally enters the chloroplast where it is phosphorylated to 3 phosphoglyceric acid which enters into the Cadwin cycle that C3 cycle. The process of photorespiration interferes with the successful functioning of the Cadwin cycle. and in this process no atp molecule and nadph are generated this process is harmful to plants because as much as half the photosynthetically fixed carbon dioxide in the form of rubp is lost into the atmosphere and thereby decreasing the photosynthetic efficiency of plants photorespiration has been found to occur in temperate plants like rice bean wheat barley and so on and these plants are known as c3 plants however in some tropical plants like sugarcane and maize photorespiration does not occur at all after c3 cycle let's discuss c4 or h and slack pathway to avoid photorespiration and excess water loss tropical plants were found to operate an alternative form of photosynthetic dark phase in which carbon dioxide is fixed by enzymes other than rubisco the first experiments indicating that some plants do not use the established c3 cycle were done by hugo p korshok and yuri korpilo the pathway was finally discovered by m d h and c r slack in 1966 so it is came to be known as hatch and slack pathway it was demonstrated that in this pathway carbon dioxide fixation is accomplished by the enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase or which we call as pep carboxylase and the first stable product is a four carbon organic compound oxaloacetic acid hence the cycle is also known as c4 cycle and the plants harboring this mechanism are called as c4 plants these plants utilize their specific leaf anatomy where chloroplasts exist not only in the mesophyll cells in the outer part of their leaves but in the bundle sheet cells as well which is known as krenz anatomy this term refers to the fact that in c4 plants the cells that surround the vascular system are packed very tightly together and are called as bundle sheet cells the chloroplasts in c4 leaves are dimorphic the chloroplasts of bundle sheet cells are larger in size and arranged centripetally they contain starch grains but lack grana the mesophyll cells on the other hand contain normal type of chloroplasts in a state of direct fixation to rubisco in the calvin cycle mesophyll cells incorporate carbon dioxide into a four carbon organic acid which has the ability to regenerate carbon dioxide in the chloroplasts of the bundle sheet cells which can then utilize this carbon dioxide to generate carbohydrates by the conventional c3 pathway c4 cycle operates in the steps 
which I will discuss here. The first step in the pathway is the conversion of pyruvate to phosphoenol pyruvate that is PEP by the enzyme pyruvate or through phosphate dikinase. This reaction requires inorganic phosphate and ATP plus pyruvate producing phosphoenol pyruvate AMP and inorganic pyrophosphate that is PPI. The next step is the fixation of carbon dioxide into oxaloestate by the enzyme PEP carboxylase. The oxaloestate is converted to malate a simple organic compound which is transported to the bundle sheet cells. Inside the bundle sheet cells malate is decarboxylated to produce carbon dioxide and pyruvate. The carbon dioxide now enters the Kelvin cycle and pyruvate is transported back to the mesophyll cells. In C4 cycle every carbon dioxide molecule has to be fixed twice first by the 3 carbon organic acid and second by the Rubisco the C4 pathway uses more energy than the C3 pathway. The C3 pathway requires 18 molecules of ATP for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose whereas the C4 pathway requires 30 ATP molecules. However, the double carbon fixation pathway confers a greater photosynthetic efficiency on C4 plants or C3 plants because the C3 enzyme Rubisco is highly inefficient in the presence of elevated levels of oxygen. After C3 and C4 cycle, let's discuss Crassulation acid metabolism that's the CAM pathway. It's an alternative photosynthetic pathway which exists in succulents such as cacts, sedum, apensia and other desert plants. These plants have the same two carbon fixing steps as are present in the C4 plants. But rather than being spatially separated between the mesophyll and bundle sheath cells, CAM plants have both carbon dioxide fixing enzymes within the same cell. These enzymes are active at different times, PEP carboxylase during the day and Rubisco at night. CAM plants are unique in that the stomata are open at night and largely closed during the day. They store carbon dioxide during night in the form of malic acid in the presence of PEP carboxylase. The carbon dioxide stored during night is used in Kelvin cycle during daytime. This diurnal change in acidity was first discovered in Crassulation plants for example Bryophyllum. So it came to be known as Crassulation acid metabolism. The biochemical pathway of photosynthesis in camp plants begins at night. With the stomata open, carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaves and into mesophyll cells where it is fixed by the enzyme PEP carboxylase. The product is malate as in C4 photosynthesis but it is transformed into malic acid and is stored in the vacuoles until the next day. This is called acidification. Although the malic acid will be used as a carbon dioxide source for the C3 cycle just as in C4 plants, it is stored until daylight because the C3 cycle requires light as an energy source. During daytime, the stomata closes and photosynthesis by the C3 cycle will quickly deplete the atmosphere within the leaf of all carbon dioxide. At this time the malic acid is transported out of the vacuole to the cytoplasm of the cell. There it is decarboxylated and the carbon dioxide so produced enters the chloroplast and is used by the C3 cycle. Thus photosynthesis continues with closed stomata. CAM has been detected in more than 1000 angiospermas of 17 different families. There are two distinctly different ecological environments where camp plants may be found. Most are terrestrial plants typical of deserts or other harsh and dry sites. 
In these environments, the pattern of stomatal opening and closing provides an important advantage for surviving arid conditions. When the stomata are open, water is lost. However, the rate of loss decreases as the air temperature decreases. By restricting the time period of stomatal opening to the night time, camp plants are extremely good at conserving water. The other ecological setting where camp plants are found is in certain aquatic habitats. When this environment was first discovered, it seemed quite odd because in these environments, conserving water would be of little value to the plant. In shallow bodies of water, the photosynthetic consumption of carbon dioxide may proceed at a rate in excess to the rate of diffusion of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into water, largely because gases diffuse several times more slowly in water than in air. Consequently, pools of water may be completely without carbon dioxide for large parts of the day. Overnight carbon dioxide is replenished and aquatic camp plants take advantage of this condition to fix the plentiful supply of carbon dioxide available at night and store it as malic acid. That was all about the dark phase of photosynthesis which we discussed under three main headings that C3 cycle, C4 cycle and CAM. Thank you for being with me. Have a nice time.